Hey gang, welcome back. This is Brooklyn Pony Part 28. For all of you that have followed along all this time, you know there's 27 other videos on there. And for those of you that may have just be seeing this for the first time, I suggest you go back and look at those 27 other videos. This video series is about a 1966 Mustang convertible that was basically rusted to pieces and the build up from there. So take a look at those other videos and enjoy. <laughs> previous video I talked about the rear bumper and making it fit better and I think the video prior to that was more in line with the quarter panel extension and taking care of the uh, fitment of that so continuing on the side of the car or the passenger side of the car I'm going to be working on the front fender now in older videos I did show some of the modifications that I made to make the fender fit the car better and I want to show you some more of that as I go along and I also want to go over making the door and the fender fit better together. It may require adding some metal to it, I haven't decided yet, but I will look into that and I'll show you that as I go along. The uh, other thing I have to deal with is the front of the car where the front bracket mounts to the front apron. There's a little bracket, a little L bracket, that the fender bolts to. And I may have shown this in a previous video as well, that bracket is not quite right. Now the extensions that I'm using are one piece extensions and they are a Dynacorn product so whatever the conflict is there I don't know but I'll show you what my, the problem is and how I'm going to address it other than that there's a few other things I may go over and we'll get to that as the video progresses so stay tuned as you can see the fender is on the car and everything is bolted up as it pretty well should be um, Previously, in, in the other video segment that I did on this, I showed how I had to modify the inner structure so that the fender would sit down and relate to the cowl. For whatever reason, there was extra material there, and so these are just my markings from where I modified it and cut pieces off. Probably could see, yeah, maybe a little bit there, I don't know. I'll show you more of that when I get it apart. Um, the gap isn't too bad right there but I can improve on that it's hard to see with the paint being dark obviously but as I was talking about these are the one piece aprons that are sold through Dynacorn and they come with the little brackets it's going to be kind of hard to show all this but I'll try to light it up for you that bracket that goes behind basically like the headlight bucket area is pre-attached. If I shine the light underneath here, that may give you some idea, hopefully, as to how big that gap is. So obviously that's a conflict. I'm not going to shim that, but what I can do is cut that bracket loose and see if I can even show you. Basically, it's, it's I can just about get a finger behind that so um, I will drill out the spot welds from in or the outside of the, the uh, apron and then adjust it accordingly to get move it forward so that it'll sit nice and snug up against this bucket so that's going to be something I need to address other than that the fender itself is pretty decent there's a few little areas that will need some attention but we'll get to that as I move along. So I'm going to take the fender off the car and start making these adjustments. Before I actually remove the fender, I want to show you one other fitment issue. And this, you can hopefully see, I'm getting a little light in there, that bracket that the rear bolt or the uh, rear mount attaches to. That bracket's probably going to have to be cut loose and adjusted to fit the fender. Now of course these are you know aftermarket fenders nothing's going to fit like original but you can see that hole hopefully see the hole is off quite a bit for the fender. So I may end up just making my own bracket and make that thing fit properly. So just another observation something I thought you might want to see 
All right, so I figured while I was here and the fender was still on the car, I would show you what I was talking about a little bit with the gap. And I took and sanded off the paint or the EDP coating. And you can see the gap at the, from the, uh, at the top section here is pretty wide. As you go further down, it gets a bit narrower. But at the top, it's pretty tight. Now, if you're looking at this, and like I showed that bracket on the inside here, and there was a gap between the bracket and the bolt hole, normally you could slide the fender back to hit that bracket, and that would be the stopping point. But this is why you can't do that. This is already tight. There's very little room for uh, adjustment there, and there's really not much you can do to change all that. Now, of course, this is not completely mocked up the exact location of where everything is going to be, but I'm just showing you this because I think I had to do this on the driver's side. I reshaped the edge of this door because this you could build up with weld. That's one way to fix it. Or you can reduce the material here and re-weld that edge and get that nice transition, that nice shape that's going to match this fender. So one way or another, you need to either modify the fender to fill the gap, or, like I said, you can change this shape, and then I can maybe move the fender back, and that'll keep this more consistent. So I'll just go into the further detail when I get to that point, but just letting you know there will be some modifications needed, and I'll make it happen. Now, of course, this is the bracket that I was referring to earlier. And basically, I'm just going to try to drill into these spot welds. I don't want to drill through the apron, but if I do, I can weld those holes shut and blend them smooth. Ideally, though, I just want to get through this bracket. And there's a series of welds here, and there's another weld up here. Now, you can kind of see, maybe, this weld is way back here. This one's kind of to the back. This one's way up front. These are at two different angles or you know two different distances. So I don't know how you know when they build these things, just how accurate this is. Normally you would think there'd be a template or a jig or something that indicates where that's supposed to be, and then your spot weld tool would follow a pattern. This looks like it was maybe done freehand, I don't know, but that's what I have to address. Basically, I'm going to use this uh, spot weld splitter. I think I got this from Auto Body Tool Mart. And I'm just gently going to work, try to work those loose. Now, of course, the top I had to drill, if you can see that or not, but I had to drill down through because there's no way I could drill up to get those spot welds loose. So I can fill those holes in later. So I salvaged that. Basically, I'm just going to move it forward a little bit and it will require putting the fender back on 
getting it where I want it, marking it, taking everything back apart, and welding it in place. Okay, so I remounted the fender and I laid on the floor and put this bracket up in place behind it and basically that's where it's going to be. And you can see the difference, hopefully see the difference where the original hole was and where the new one needs to be. So maybe three quarters of five eighths to three quarters of an inch, something like that. And of course I'll drill two new holes up on top here and weld through the top and then plug weld these other two that I had drilled to separate this. So I'm going to get this prepped and get it in place. Now, of course, all of that will get primed and painted later, but at this point, that's all I need, so I'm going to leave it like it is. Now, as I continue with the process of getting this fender to fit the way that I want it to fit, or that it needs to fit, I want to show you something else. On this cowl, I know it's kind of hard to tell, but this is not 90 degrees. This section here it comes down to this lower section. It's actually at a slight angle. The problem with that is the fender is built for 90 degrees. So what I've done, and you can kind of see a little bit here, I've kind of tapped this back in. I just put my uh, one body hammer blade against this surface and then I struck it with another hammer. I know you're not supposed to do that, but the idea is I want to make this fold back just a little bit to give that fender a little bit more room because ideally you want all this stuff to fit so that it's not rubbing and chafing on you know, each piece. As you're driving down the road, you know, you're going to have vibrations. You don't want stuff rubbing on it. So you can see these are, these are some of the contact points where it was hitting before I did any modifications. And on the fender, I know I'm in the process of this, but I had drilled out these spot welds because this corner was kind of low. And I, I don't want to just force it. So ideally, I might have to 
drill out this spot weld as well. The idea being, if I get it in place, I can tweak this up just a little bit and re-weld these. And that way it's going to be in a fixed location and not going to be a conflict later. You know, these little details are what you have to deal with sometimes. And, you know, there, there are ways to fix it, but you just kind of have to think kind of backwards, I guess, and undo some of the stuff that was done previously and uh, figure it out from there. I'm going to show you something else while I'm thinking about it. The little cage nut that goes in the bottom of the rocker, those are always a problem. Even the aftermarket ones, you know, if you get it in there and you hit it wrong with the bolt, you'll knock it out of the way and then you're just chasing it inside the rocker. So what I do is I tack weld it. Four corners. There's no reason you shouldn't. I can't think of any reason why you wouldn't. But for me, this just makes it simpler because I'm not going to be chasing this thing around. Now, with that in place, I also have ground down the welds so that it basically fits flush. There is always a conflict with or situation where you get to put shims in here. And even the factory cars had could have one, two, three shims, whatever. So in this case, using the fenders that I'm using, which you know they're they had Dynacorn name on them. I'm just telling you that up front. Uh, I made a spacer block. Nine washers is what it took to fill that gap because you can't just torque down on a bolt. You'll crush the fender and distort everything. So you have to have something. So this is my fix. And of course I'll, I'll clean all this up and paint it, but um, that's what it's going to take to make that fender fit right. Just let you know. Now I could, I, I may change this up. I may actually make a, you know, take a piece of pipe or something and cut it to this length uh, just to clean it up a little bit, but these are some of the things you have to deal with and just just know that. Okay, now I'm going to show you something that might make you cringe a little bit, but it works. And this is an old body shop technique. I've already done this slightly. just want to show you exactly how this works. Sometimes when you're doing panels and you're feeling a difference between them, and this works really well on modern cars just because the metal is a lot flimsier, but if you're feeling, you know, a transition, like in this case, you know, the, the fender is a little bit higher, there are ways to adjust things. And, you know, these, whoever makes these panels, they're not going to have a jig that is going to be exactly the same door to, you know, fender or whatever. So, and I've done, I've, I'm telling you this works. You take something round, in this case a block of wood, and I'm going to set it in that, in the deep part of that crease, and give it a little, just a little shot. And what that does is it just makes things move. You know, because you, you, I hate to say, I don't know, I don't know what I want to say, but <laughs> sometimes you have to be aggressive to make things happen. And this is what works. I've done this before on other cars. I've done it with a, uh, a two by four, a flat pan, you know, a flat two by four, put it on the surface, hit it, and it just allows some movement and remedy some of these issues. You may not want to do it, but I'll just let you know. I've done it and it works. So now I have a much better transition at that point. I may do a little bit more fine tuning as I go along, but just want to show you that. Have I mentioned how much I like these little Braun flashlights? They're great. Let me show you this. If you look down in this gap, you can see the fender is kind of angled back, and that's where it's making contact with the cowl. So you can see now maybe why I've cut those welds loose, and I'm going to reform that a little bit so that it takes care of that chafing. It's 
a little bit uh, happening up in here but now that I've adjusted that cow see if I can I don't know if I can get enough light in there the way I want to show you but um, now it's not rubbing against the cow so anyway just letting you know sometimes you just gotta massage things into place and of course this is where I was talking about this transition right here it's close but it's a little bit off here where it meets the top part of the cow so I want to try to adjust this a little bit and clean up that edge as best I can some things you just have to live with you can't fix every single little thing but while I'm at this point I'm going to try to fix the little things so that it's not an issue later this is the point that I say I'm happy with that and I say that because now nothing is chafing nothing is making contact on that cowl and the shape the transition is much better coming across here still a little bit here that I can you know play with but I did cut loose the other spot welds and so that allowed this to move and fit much much better so now I'm going to go back and weld those in place and move on from there I still have to mess with the bracket inside of the fender here now before I do all the welding I want to show you a couple things as well these are the spot welds that I cut loose and part of the problem was this bent flange on this inner brace this piece you maybe can see it there there's a high there was a high spot right there and that's where this was interacting poorly we'll say that this flange well you can see what I'm directing you at there Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit looking at the camera backwards sorry okay when this was folded over on whatever tooling that it had this piece ended up being a little bit longer than this leg and so it was hitting right here and that was creating some of the problem also when I put this on the car and I had it in we'll say a relaxed state to where I could have it fit correctly if you look this is way off uh, the, the spot welds that were here was forcing things or restraining it the wrong way so when I had it in a relaxed state these two flanges were lined up and if you do that you can you can see that the spot welds at this point hopefully you can see I don't know that they're not lined up where they were because it's not constrained anymore and part of that had to do with when I'm uh, this section here when I said before it was hitting the cow when I cut that loose I was able to bend it forward or in a little bit and that changed some of the dimensions let's say of the fender but I believe if I line up this bottom edge with the edge of this inner brake uh, bracket and I'm just going to tack weld it for now maybe right on that corner and everything if everything lines up I'll come back and I'll spot weld or fill in these welds as it was and make it solid again so just want to show you that again you know these these aftermarket parts they're never going to fit like original so it's not like a TV show where you see them throw a fender on and next thing you know it's painted there's a lot of work that goes into this alright with everything welded solid the way it should be I have a really nice transition to the cowl Still getting a little bit of attention here, but that'll be pretty minor, I think. Um, at this point, what I want to do is address some of this gap. Now, it's pretty decent at the bottom, and it comes up, and somewhere right about in here, it starts to get a little wide. And then, of course, as you come up further, it gets even wider. So, I think, I'm not sure yet, I may weld. I may weld to the front of the door, but one or the other I'm going to weld 
and build this up and then reshape it. I think I see a little nick or kind of a deformity up here in the door, sorry. So I may work this edge down first and see what it looks like. Just to show you, that's one quick pass doing little, just little overlapping welds on the edge of that door and you can already see it's making a difference so I'll do another pass at the top here and I may not mess anymore with the bottom section maybe a little bit more here below the curve but otherwise that's what I'm doing and that was a couple more passes so as you can see that gap is a lot nicer now of course I'm still I've still got to blend it, but I have something to work with now. So after the initial blending, I went back and I welded on the face of the door to make sure I have a nice transition. Because it's one thing to have the gap right, but if the door has a subtle curve to it, which it does, it's going to lead in behind the door essentially when you redo bodywork. So now I can blend this and it's going to make me have a smooth transition all the way across. I didn't want to waste video showing me grinding. I'm sure you all can figure that out. But now you can see how much different it is when you got a nice clean gap. So I've still got a little bit to do up here at the top. That'll take just a little more effort. And there's a couple little spots that I may have to add a little bit of weld to, like on this corner. But for the most part, that's what it's going to take and like I say I'm happy with that so like I said I went back and I touched up a couple little spots where it was a little bit low and I added some more to the front edge of the door and blended it and I'm very happy with how that looks nice consistent gap all the way down so I'll take the fender back off and work on making that bracket on the inside. Alright, so as you can see with the fender off, I can show you this bracket. And I took a look before I took the fender off. I did another look and the alignment was a little bit better, but it still wasn't good. And I think that changed a little bit whenever I drilled out those spot wells and allowed the bracket or something to shift just a little bit, but it still wasn't good enough because where the hole is it really needs to be like out here somewhere more in this range and if you look at the fender or look at the bracket on the car it's at 90 degrees to the A pillar so you've got this nice T the fender if you look at the location where the hole is here and if you if you look straight down you can kind of see this angles that way. If you if I line it up to where it's flat, if you look across that surface, you can see probably how much of a difference that makes. Now that comes into play whenever you're trying to put this bolt in because you've got a flat bracket or a square bracket and it really needs to go in at an angle like this so that when the fender is on the car, that fender bracket is actually angled back like that 
So I'm going to have to come up with a way to remedy this. And ideally, you know, I'd like to use the factory bracket, uh, but I don't want to move it. I like where it is. The fender actually sits on top of that. And I know I talked before about chafing, but this is a little bit different scenario. This, when the fender's in place and the bolt's tight, it's not going anywhere. It's not moving. But I'm going to have to do something different. So what I've come up with is I have some of this material. Now this is uh, a leftover patch piece from a frame rail repair. And it's the same thickness, if not thicker, than that bracket. So what I'll do is modify or make a new bracket while leaving most of this in place. I may have to trim it and open up that hole for the bolt to have room to go into the new bracket. But I'll weld it on here and I'll be able to angle it and help take care of some of that room or some of that uh, angle issue and I think that's going to remedy that. So let me get started. I'm going to cut this up and make a new bracket. I know with the black paint on the fender it's hard to see that angle that I'm talking about. So this is my basic bracket. If I put it on here and I show you what would be a 90 degree you can see the difference there perhaps and then that's the actual angle. That's a big difference. I put the fender back on the car as you can see but I wanted to show you if I can how far off that is. Basically I can get my finger between the factory bracket and the fender which is a really big gap. And also the angle I thought I would show you a little bit more of this so I put the fender back on and I'm going to try to show you how big that gap is. I have a light in there and basically I can get my finger between the fender and the bracket. I also want to point out that the angle for the hole even though it's improved um, as far as how it looks in the bracket, it is better, but the angle, yeah, it's kind of hard to show you, but if you follow the threads, like if I stuck a bolt in that hole, from here it looks like, yeah, the hole lines up, but it doesn't actually, because of the, one, the angle from 90 degrees, and then secondly, the angle of the threads are actually down like that. If that makes sense. Like if you try to put a bolt in, it's going to want to ride on top of the hole in the bracket and push the fender up. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of hard to convey an idea sometimes, but I want it. I want people to understand what's going on with some of the stuff, and uh, you know what you have to do to fix it. All right. So you can see I've tacked on the new bracket and it is lower than the original and the, there's enough space now where I can lower the hole that will eventually be for the fender. Of course I will trim this down but I'm just mocking things up so that I can have a look at it and make sure everything is going to line up properly. So that's the end result see I cut away the other bracket and of course adjusted the angle. I think it's going to work out just fine. So there's what it looks like with a bolt in place and holding it nice. 
So that's a good thing. So that's it for this episode. I thank you for watching. I hope you learned something or at least found some information that may be valuable for your project. As I said before, it's not a matter of just putting something on. Uh, I've talked about other panels where you've had to manipulate or massage to make them fit the car, and it's not uncommon, but there are ways to fix it or at least adjust it to where it suits your needs. Now, not all cars are going to be built to this extent. Some are just going to be daily drivers. Some are just going to be fun cars that people put together. So you may not go this far with the process. But for me, I want this car to be straight. I want it to look right. And this is what I do. And all of this is going to help later on when it's in primer and paint. Because once you find problems at that point, it's too late. So I'd rather spend the time up front, get everything as nice as I can, and then not have to deal with it later. Again, thank you for watching. If you'd be so kind, throw a thumbs up on there, subscribe, share, tell your friends about the channel. Anything that helps further the process and get some information out there for other people. So stay tuned, take care of yourselves, and we'll see you next time. And do a verification that the that it's blah 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 blah. And keep blah 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 blah. I'm glad you came along and watched. I hope you found something useful in this process. And I wanted to point out that you know, oh my gosh, I can't get this right. Hopefully, I'll be able to put some... Now, a lot of the stuff that I'm doing is 